You know, I'd like to see art therapists everywhere. And I think, I think every hospital ought to have a whole pile of us working with everybody because I think there's a whole lot of good we can do. So to start off, how would you define art therapy? Well, I think that, that um, one of the things that makes visual art really healing for people mm -hmm. is that as the artist, you're in charge. Mm -hmm. You're the boss. You get to decide what you're going to make and how you're going to do it and what it's going to be out of. Mm -hmm. And that's tremendously helpful if you can imagine being a medical patient. You know, particularly if you're a child, you're in a hospital and you don't get to pick a whole lot of stuff, and you have to do a whole lot of stuff that you wouldn't choose to do. Mm -hmm. So the, our first, the first place we connect is by putting the, the patient in charge of something, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where the process gets kicked off. Do you mostly work in a group setting or one-on-one -on -one and mostly in hospitals or in other spaces? What we do is located either in the inpatient hospital or in the outpatient clinic infusion area. Okay. We work exclusively, Tracy's Kids, my organization, mm -hmm. focuses exclusively on pediatric cancer and hematology patients mm -hmm. and their families. How many of the children who come in are open to art making mm -hmm. and how many come in closed off and scared or, <sighs> yeah. you know? looking at a blank piece of paper and freaking out. Right. How comfortable are these kids creating right off the bat? They tend to be pretty comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, most of them are a lot more worried because they're coming to a doctor's office. Mm -hmm. They're a lot more scared about needles and yeah. tests. And one of the things that terrifies little tiny children is that somebody's going to feel their tummy. They hate it. <laughs> they just want you to leave them alone. Yeah. So they're a lot more comfortable with what we have. Mm -hmm than the other parts of their day. And what are some of the things that you're looking for to know when it's time to pull a kid aside and give them some more one-on-one -on -one attention or sort of explore their artwork more? What kind of things are you looking for there? Well, it, it, it's very individualized. Um, I'm thinking of when I was actually like in the clinic, I was working with a, a young woman, a teenager, um, who was like in a separate room. Mm -hmm. She couldn't really sit up that well. And so I went in to work with her there and her mom and dad stepped out of the room to talk with the doctor. And we had been, I'd known her for probably six weeks when she had been diagnosed and she had a devastating diagnosis and her prognosis was horrible. Now most of the time with kids, it's really good. Mm -hmm. um, but this was an exception. But she was a great, great kid. And so she just, Kind of like, we, she was, I forget what she was working on. Maybe this sort of like, she was doing, I think, a syringe painting where we had masked off a canvas and she was actually using medical supplies to distribute the paint cool, yeah. on the paper, right? So that was kind of a fun thing in and of itself. And she's doing this and she just put her stuff down and she looks at me and she goes, you know, I know I am not getting better. I know I'm not. My blood counts aren't good. I can feel it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to live. And I was like, I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't have a crystal ball. I don't get into whether people are going to get better or not. But I just kind of tried to support her in articulating that feeling. And I was just kind of a, a receiver. You know, she just needed to tell somebody that thought that she was pretty sure that she wouldn't get well. Um, then the next time I saw her, she says, you know what? I've decided... She was in the hospital a lot. She goes, I'm not going to watch TV anymore. It's not productive. I want to do art therapy every day. I want you to come see me every time you can, and I'm going to make art, and that's going to be something I can leave behind for my family and friends. And that's exactly what she did. She began to make a legacy of these gifts, and some of them were collages that expressed memories and her relationships with people. Um, some of them were these incredible um, stoneware cups and bowls and vessels that she made as gifts to give to her parents and her aunts and uncles and all kinds of special people. And um, she was always working. And every Friday before I left the hospital, I had to go up to her and bring her 
she would send me a list. Okay, bring me this, 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 and this, because I got all this stuff to do over the weekend. And then I'd come in on Monday, and we'd continue the process. And we did. We worked with her every day. That's amazing. Yeah, until she died. 